Speaking of critical failure, how's Austin doing? <laughs> <laughs> Owned. Have you ever done an episode not smoking weed, Conrad? Um, no. No, I don't think so. Why would anybody do that? Wake up, we drive the bell. No sweat, now feeling swell. A G golly, it's a beautiful day. I'm gonna burn my troubles away. I'm going to live. Light up the town. Low walls at home. I'm melting down. I saw someone on Twitter suggesting that what Austin needs to do is have like the opposite of uh, the season three wild magic table, but like every time we ask for advantage, it's just chill. Let's roll the dice and see what bad effect you get now. Every effect on the table will be lose a different limb. Cool. Can I get advantage on the the consequence table? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that just means you roll twice on it. That's fine, just as long as I got advantage. <laughs> okay, so before we actually get back into me fucking up, uh, let's introduce- <laughs> you admit it! We forgot to do this last week, but we're still very early in the season. Who is everybody? I'm Austin Yorski, the Dungeon Master, the Narrator, and all the NPCs who you befriend, despite my best efforts to make you fight them. Um, you can find me at patreon.com slash Austin Yorski. We actually just launched a separate credits show, which is going to be a mo- more fully featured kind of improv podcast it, where like Lauren is going to do more jokes than just reading the name. You're welcome, everybody who craved all my content. Oh, I'm Lauren. I play a little of the beans. Uh, and I like to call Austin a little bitch. That's what, that's what you need to know about me. Uh, that's That's all they need to know? Okay. If you like... Titty pics. I have them. My Twitter's in the description, I'm assuming, unless Austin hates me. It should be there. We'll see how the episode goes. Maybe by the end it won't be in the description anymore. Is it because I'm going to keep asking for advantage? It is. (laughs) Okay. Well, you're still a little bitch. I'll jump in next. I'm Laura. Not Lauren. Laura. (laughs) They're two very similar names, but they're different names. One's got an N on the end, one does not. I'm the one with the no N at the end. I'm Laura. Uh, I play Vindras, who is a mantis lady. Uh, she's got many healing magic. And you can find me at Laura K. Buzz in a bajillion places. But the one I'm sort of pointing people at at the moment is either Patreon, that's the one that pays the bills, or YouTube, where I'm doing a series every Friday where I do videos about accessibility in video games. So check that out. And I'm Conrad Zimmerman. Uh, I play Brother Corton, a incredibly sexy mole bard. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Conrad Zimmerman. Uh, I make anti-capitalist propaganda that you can wear, which you can buy at pinfultruth.com. And I'm, yeah, I'm suddenly realizing I didn't throw the ball to you, Conrad, and I feel so... I, I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't, you know, pass the ball. Well, you know, it's uh, it's not the same. I've, uh, I've let myself down, admit. I've let the team down. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you, know, you know who's never a letdown, though? Who? Chris. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, hello, this is Henry Kessinger. Chris could not be here, but I'm here to let you know that he is playing the, the Genasi Sorcerer. I don't remember her name right now, but she's very good. And if you would like to check out his work, you can find it at patreon.com slash weekly manga recap. The, the V's are actually W's for the names there. Thank you. Well, okay, that was a thing. Every week, something different. I mean, it's a really solid Kissinger, I'm not going to lie. I, it was, uh, I was impressed, but also horrified. As one is when confronted with Henry Kissinger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The appropriate response. So the last episode ended with uh, Sabrina casting, I believe, charm person on my villain who was trying to do an ambush. And so instead of a cool fight scene, you guys are friends now because that's just how this is going to go this season, I guess. <laughs> the, an important thing <laughs> yeah. to know is that charm person usually uh, ends with the target knowing they've been mind tricked, which is bad normally. It's a kind of... Uh, it's like a high risk, high reward spell because it can get you out of a scrape. But afterwards, the person's going to be very pissed. But I botched 
to resist it. So a negative consequence for this NPC, I think, is going to be so impressed by your audacity that he's not going to hold this against you. Uh, Sweet. Zer is this uh, bat person's name, this bat folk. Um, he is a flying fox, which if you haven't seen are very adorable. <sighs> They're exactly what they sound like. But this is one Flying is- fox? Mm-hmm. This is anthropomorphic, kind of brownish, orangish fur, big teeth, uh, very canine head. And he falls out of the canopy and like lands in front of the party in this shattered section of the glass forest. And uh, Sabrina, you have the floor to uh, basically end this hostility and turn it to your advantage. Uh, so does this person have any weapons on them? So I think this person has a bunch of hidden blades on them, like knives and like small spe- spears, like throwing spears, stuff that would be great in an ambush. They're dressed very simply, like a, like a black cloak and like just the the barest um, like stealth gear. They're not like heavily kitted up because they're trying to move silently through the canopy. I just want to say then, uh, could you remove your weapons, please? So this doesn't have to become some kind of bad thing. <laughs> what do you trade me for him? Friendship. Mm. And a chance to talk to my pet. He lives in a helmet. Can't cut a cake with friendship, but that's a nice knife you got there. Uh, what about some shiny rocks? Everything's shiny here. I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna show him my fancy rock pouch. It's on my character sheet, I think. I think Zer does like a theatric jump onto a glass stump of one of the trees you shattered here to like, and spreads his wings like very like uh, histrionically, like he's performing for an audience, but does it specifically like above you, Lola, because you're a small lizard person. And just like, it's basically just like not regarding you with the same respect he has for Sabrina. (laughs) You don't like rocks. Uh, nope. Now he jumps off the, the trunk and just lands lightly on top of your head. Just one foot. On s- my head? Squarely on top of your head. Balancing on my head? On your head, balancing there, but still uh, locked eyes with Sabrina. Just totally re- disrespecting you. Um, he's surprisingly light. He's like a human adult size, but because he has to be able to fly, his bones are hollow and his body is is just uh, incredibly, shockingly light. I am going to fall to the ground like a normal gecko. <laughs> okay. Get out from under him. Oh, wait. Okay. So actually do a uh, dexterity saving throw. The mental image I have of this is you just playing dead. It's like, oh, no thing. Uh, I'm not a threat. 11. <laughs> so, I mean, 11's average. So uh, you definitely don't get hurt or anything. But I think as you fall to the ground, he just like lightly steps off you. If this was like a musical we were doing instead of a podcast, this would be like a dance scene you have together. It's, it would be pretty interesting, I think. Uh, but it's really about Sabrina right now. He's just playing with you. Uh, sh- She's, so Sabrina's going to say, you were trying to ambush us earlier. You got that right, little miss. We need your stuff. We need food. We need knives. We need bigger knives. Swords, they're called. I'd love one. Do you have a sword for me? No, and that's not really what I was getting at. The point is that you were trying to ambush us, and to make it amicable between us, you need to drop all of your weapons. Hmm. He like just uh, reaches into like his belt and just pulls out a couple of short spears and tosses them playfully at Corton and Vindros, um, not trying to hit you, just like sticking in the ground near your feet, basically. Uh, Vindros is gonna just turn to Corton and whisper, "How long is this adorable charge stick gonna last before we all get like real badly stabbed? Because it's working for now." Just pick up the knives. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, this shouldn't be working, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Vindras pick, uh, picks up uh, one of the knives. And Corton's also going to collect any knife, knives at his feet. Yeah. And- yeah, so Corton and Vindra start scrounging up the weapons that Zer is throwing, and he gets more like rowdy about throwing them. Like you reach down and he tries to throw them between your fingers as you reach down. I'm actually gonna roll for this one because he might mess this up. Seventeen. That's a very good throw. Uh, so that he successfully like puts a like knife right between your fingers, Corton, as you reach down. It's very mm. impressive. Okay. Very good. They 
Thank you. Are there more? I have a couple questions for you. Are you going to ask them, or are we just going to sit here and admire each other? I guess I'll ask them, because I don't want to do the other one. So, <laughs> what's? do you know what's up with the big thing in the forest with the eyes? Mmm, the white glass demon. We know him. We love him. Big, big, big. Is he friendly? <laughs> those those eyes weren't looking too friendly to me. I wouldn't know. No one who ever goes to check comes back. Make your own observations. Draw your own conclusions from that, I guess. Do you live in the forest here? Where else would I live? There's a couple towns just over that way. And the gore fields. I don't know if you'd want to live there. <laughs> I take it you haven't met the king. He doesn't take too kindly to us. Uh, yeah, I've never met him. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes darting from side to side. Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah, no, we, 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 we can vouch, we can vouch. No one has ever met the king less than this one here. I don't even know what a king is. So do you have any food or not? Maybe. The first thing, though, I need to ask is the most important question of all. Have you seen a woman come through here with a necklace like this one? And Sabrina's going to pull out her rose quartz necklace. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Zer, like, jumps forward, like, gets right up in your face, like, way unnecessary, unnecessarily close to look at your necklace. And, like, reaches, like, towards it, holds it, looks at it theatrically. I think might even live maybe even like bites it to see if it's like real, but I don't think he knows what that would even prove, but makes a big show of examining it basically. And then whirls around, go, goes back over to where Lola is and says, Nope, never seen one before. Corton's going to rifle through uh, supplies and find some of the food that they have in, in store to share with if there's any food that is, like, the least good food, like, you can purify it up a bit, but not the, not the good stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so Sabrina used a spell to make this not hostile, and now Corton's gonna give up some resources to make it even friendlier. So I think this is going to basically work for how you want. Um, you, you hand over some food to Zer, and he says... Now, this won't be enough for everybody, but it's a start. It's a start. It's a star. What, what can I do for you? We're looking for friends. People who see things, know things, hmm. get around. Now, this is me out of character. What is Corton looking for? Is this uh, you're looking for people for your cult? Yeah, well, or at least he's... This guy he knows is not going to uh, join the cult. He's a mercenary. But he does have a network of other useful mercenaries, and they are spies. I mean, they're not great warriors. We took them down pretty quickly. But they can let us know if we're being tailed by the God King. Zer says, I'm just a simple forest cut purse. I don't know about knowing things or knowing people, strategies, and spying and all that. I'm just hungry, man. Me and my friends, we're hungry, but... I think I might know somebody who knows something, who knows things, who knows people. Is that what you want? I can take you to her. And what will it take to get there? Well, it's not the getting there that's difficult. It's just that knowing things is expensive. You catch my drift? People mm. will always want things all the time. They're always, they always be wanting, and they won't tell you if, if you don't give them stuff. It's a whole thing. What, what kind of things are they wanting? Same thing everyone wants. Food, sharps, shinies. So they... Hold on, that was Cordelia for a minute. Uh, so they may like shiny rocks, too. Uh, uh, please, keep the rocks to yourself. I have never been so insulted in my life. The day is young. All the same. I feel we might be able to strike up a trade. Zer says, let's see how fast you can move then, ground folk. And he jumps back up into the canopy and starts uh, flapping between the trees, basically. So he can jump pretty far and flap the rest of the way from tree to tree. Can you keep up with him? Roll athletics to find out. I got Nate. 
I got an 18. Damn, Quarton. Uh, I also got an 18. Damn, Vindross. I crit? Holy Damn, shit. girl. <laughs> <laughs> Three 18s. Yeah, ev- everyone crazy. except for the child is doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> we can carry her. Yeah. Uh, so Sabrina lags behind. Um, uh, Lola, what do you do that's so very impressive with your crit? <laughs> I was thinking, have you ever seen like lizards run? <laughs> uh, but like when they're on the water, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing that to the s- ground. <laughs> the high stepping. Yeah, the high stepping. I'm I'm out of here. All right. So everyone but Sabrina keeps pace with Zer, but uh, Lola especially does a very impressive job. And I think uh, for that for that. Crit, I'm going to give you something in a second here. Uh, but Zer basically takes you deeper and deeper into the forest, further east towards what he called the White Glass Demon, that thing with the giant eyes. Mm. Uh, but he eventually the, the ground starts sloping downward, and you realize, uh, Lola, because you're up ahead, that you are descending actually down, down, down a path, which is taking you lower in elevation. And you see that these bats have dug uh, into the glass forest and created like little caves here. Um, it, oh, yeah. And so with your with your crit, I'm gonna give you something impressive. I want you to impress the person who's here, so that they like you more right off the bat. So you're doing your cool high step, and do you, do you want to add anything before I reveal who this is? <laughs> so what if I play my jug while I'm running? <laughs> Does anybody else have an appreciation for Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas? No one knows what you're talking about. Uh, so you run. Up, so uh, you run up ahead. You eventually leave the party behind far enough that you have time to like lean up against a, a wall here and pull out your jug and play a little tune. So these tunnels aren't very deep. They're more like burrows <gasps> here, like a fox would make in a forest. Uh, but the next bat folk you see is not a flying <laughs> is not a flying fox. They are a Honduran white bat. These are my favorite favorite bats that exist. They're so tiny. Mm-hmm. They look like little cotton balls. Mm-hmm. I think of them as a little, little living marshmallow babies. Yeah, they're like little, oh. with only some of it got toasted, but not the whole marshmallow. And that's their ears and their nose. They're little, small, white puff balls, and they have a very uh, yellow, like, ears and noses that look kind of like leaf, leaves almost. That's so cute. Very cute. But the person you run up to here is a tiny Honduran white Bat, white bat folk who is like sitting in their burrow legs crossed like in a a meditative position and she does not look up as you uh are playing your jug in her burrow but she still heard it and that's what matters right yeah her her ears uh like flicker you know do that little dog thing yeah 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 um, so she knows you're there, and Zer is like standing on, on top of the burrow, like his feet on the edge, just like maybe he even like swings around to be hanging from the ceiling. And he's he's made the introduction. Here's the person who knows things. Zer is a bandit. He robs people in the forest for their food and equipment. This is someone who knows things. Howdy, ma'am. Okay, so what I'm going to give you for your crit is that this person is not immediately suspicious and hostile of you like they normally would. Instead, they're intrigued. Uh, she opens just one eye, but you can tell that she can't really see you because her vision is not great here in the early morning sun. And she says, Hello? Hello. I heard you know things. Mmm. I'm the knower of things around here. We would like to know things. What would it take for you to help us know things? Hmm. We're simple people. We want what everyone wants. Food, sharps, shinies. Do me and Corton still have the 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 blades that were thrown down at our feet? I mean, of course, but they're not going to accept their own shit back <laughs> as a bribe. <laughs> That's some serious goose game shit. I I I don't know. I I I'm curious how deceptive I would have to be to to give them their own shit. So Sabrina's <laughs> going to show up eventually. It took her a little bit of time. She was very far behind. Uh and she's going to say, "So, you know everything around these woods in the area?" 
Mm, everything that's worth knowing. And she's going to uh, pull out her necklace. She says, have you seen a woman wearing this necklace? Mm, bring it closer. It's so bright. I'll, I'll bring it closer. Mm-hmm. She uh, just puts her, her whole mouth on it. <laughs> mm, I have to echolocate. Just a brief interlude, because I just went and checked my fucking equipment. Oh, no. Someone's- fun Rocks pouch, because she loves Fun Rocks. It's been there since day one, Yorski. It's not about this. It's not about the anything. You can't do this to me. I'm doing it to you. <laughs> see, see I, I can see why Austin is maybe hesitant, because I can hear it now that it, it, it becomes the crab thing from season three, where it's like, aha, I always have the thing to trade now. Have the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's just really fun... Uh, bothering austin <laughs> yeah the the pl- the players don't give a shit about the npcs they want to fight with me austin yorski <laughs> i'm now wondering next time i level up what could i just add to my character sheet that austin might not notice just do it i'll, I'll add something in the middle of the description of ca- uh, chameleon carapace or something where you're not gonna look <laughs> <laughs> yeah get him <laughs> So the white bat does some chirping to uh, basically echolocate around the edges of this necklace to more accurately determine its properties. And after a moment, uh, the bat says, Hmm, not from around here this is. Perhaps, hmm, maybe. I could tell you more. What do you have to offer in return? You, You know where it is? The other necklace just like this? Mm, maybe. What do you have to offer in return? Uh, Sabrina's going to be kind of nervous for a moment. And then she's going to place her hand on the dagger at her hip and steal herself. She's like, I have this dagger from home. Hmm. We have many sharps here. Do we need more, Zer? And Zer's outside the burrow and he says... Uh, I just gave them a bunch of the sharps, but we have plenty. We have plenty. Like, what if I knew people over in the kingdom where the god king is, and I could maybe try to get you a favor with them? Ooh, this is interesting. Why don't you roll persuasion with uh, with advantage, because they they <gasps> like you. Oh, boy. Uh, 23. You rolled three times? Did you just get a second advantage because the first advantage isn't good enough anymore? <laughs> I-, I clicked it too many times. I have the little 3D dice on mine activated, so I see the dice go, and I was like, oh, the second dice didn't go, so I clicked it again. That was the third I time. think you're just building up a resistance. It isn't enough to get one advantage anymore. You need two to get high. As soon as you're going to need three, it's just... Austin, I... H- hold on. I rolled a 26, 20... I, I, ro- I crit on super advantage four, <laughs> so... <laughs> What does that give me? It's like levels of Super Saiyan. You just have to keep <laughs> raising it to arbitrarily. Austin, I got a crit on four! Yeah. Uh, so you didn't uh, ask this character's name, so now you don't get it. Fuck you. That's how social interaction works. I thought we did learn it, and then I forgot it, so I've been tactfully trying to avoid that fact because I'm very shy. No, the, you, the four of you don't know how to talk to people for some reason. I guess this is what happens when you get five mentally ill nerds together. It's none of them know how to do social interactions, but that's how normally you start talking to people. That's fine. She's white bat now. Okay. The the white bat who knows things uh, says to Sabrina that you have a metal dagger, which obviously proves that you're of a high stature. You know people. So if you're willing to go to the city, Harp City to the east, where you're planning on going anywhere, going anyway, and make some kind of connection, uh, basically like a trade route of people who will come to the glass forest and trade uh, with the bat people, uh, she will help you. She will tell you what you want to know. Um, but in order to make sure you don't just leave, uh, the white bat is going to send Zer with you. Oh, I was going to actually argue to get Zer with us anyway. So I guess that all works out. Everybody gets I mean, what they want. Deal. I, you're really pressing me here, but deal, I guess. You know, if we, if we have to take them, if we're forced, 
Uh huh. Uh, so you basically have this flying fox uh, man now, who is a very stealthy operator. Not the most robust in a fight. Very, very fragile, actually. But it's basically a bat ninja. Uh, so he's gonna come with you and make sure you establish this trade route with the bat people, and that will help everyone. Um, so the white bat closes her eyes and says, "Hmm, I have heard of these gems. The God King." Gives them to his consorts. I don't know what that is, but where do they get them from? Corton knows what that is, and he's Indu. <laughs> the white bat said, "Yeah, the white bat says <laughs> where they come from isn't as important. Mines worked by mole slaves, no doubt. Brutal, terrible. The important thing is that the God King gives these." To Genasi women, he hopes will bear him a child with a godlike ability. What do you mean? God King Wolfram has many children, but none which have his power. I, I know a few of them. Uh, I'm, at this, she actually opens her eyes. That's a very weird thing to say. <laughs> but, but what do you mean? Like, what kind of power? Hmm... They call it a conduit. It's what makes him the god king and not just a warlord. How, how do you get one of those? Nobody knows, so he keeps trying. And what happens to the, to, to the calm sorts that he doesn't like? They get sent away. To where? Hmm. No one knows. There's a rumor... That he had just has them disposed of. That can't be true. No, they have to go somewhere. There's a resort on this map. Maybe he sends them to the resort. <laughs> That's in character. She laughs. <laughs> Absinthia is no resort. But it says resort and spa on the map. Why would a map lie to us? A map's just like a one-page book. Ask yourself why someone would want to portray a place as being much nicer than it is. Maybe your friends can tell you. It's usually crimes. It's usually crimes. Yeah. Yeah, you don't usually put the place where we do all the bad things on, on the official map. That's not, that's not a recipe for... That, that doesn't go well. Yeah, for the audience, if you haven't looked at the map, to the east, there are three major locations. Absinthia, Spa and Resort, which sounds nice, but now you're getting the idea it may not be nice. There's the Gore Fields, which sounds bad. Oh, no, I want to go to the Gore Fields. But away. I get the idea now that it might be nice. Yeah. Oh, I'm so ready to get a, a pedicure in the Gore Fields. <laughs> and then there's Harp City, which is where Sabrina has said she wants to go because that's where most people will be. And as far as you know, that's just like the major city in Avalon. So those are the three locations right now. But uh, this this bat person is telling you that there's a lot more people out there like your mother, Sabrina. And it seems like God King Wolfram just kind of gives out these pendants to a lot of moms. Upon hearing the woman who knows a lot of things whose name we do not know... Um, put it put it out there that ah, your mother, one of the consorts of the of the king, uh, Vindras is going to ple- feign uh, shock, like oh, you're connected to the royals. Oh, this is news to us. Sabrina is mostly quiet right now and clearly very caught up in her own head as she's thinking about things, but. As a player, I would like to suggest somebody should ask her about that demon thing. <laughs> oh, uh, white, white bat who knows things. What's what's up with the demon? Hmm. We don't go near it. It's very unfortunate. There's a great source of water near it. Ooh. Hmm. Does anybody else want to go jig out of the demon? So what you're saying is that if we could make friends with this demon... You just can't spend the next 34 episodes with a two-story demon on your team. Can. It's just going to break the combat. You know, he doesn't have to come with us, but he can just be our friend. You described this post-apocalypse as being like Adventure Time, and in that there's like a, a huge rainbow dragon that just hangs out, and everyone's like, yeah, that's cool, that's chill. 
Um, so at this point, I guess you have a choice to make. Either you can go see what the demon is about, and uh, you know that there is something to be gained, resources, water, and you remember you just gave some food to Zer, so that's going to be an issue at some point. Or you can go the long way around, and you don't know how that's going to turn out. But the, the demon is between you and leaving the forest. I want to see it. That sounds like now's the perfect time to go face the demon, because we have an extra party member. I'll also say this, it'll be a lot easier to convince your royal friends to send traders here if the demon problem has been taken care of. If we mm-hmm. leave it, it's just going to come back later, you know? Well, let's go f- find a demon, I guess. Yeah, let's find a demon. Hell yeah. Hell yeah! I'm going to befriend it. Demon, demon, demon. All right, so uh, the party, uh, why don't you all have at least some discussion here on the way, because this is a pretty wild thing you've all decided to do. I'm sure some of you have some reservations. I don't, you, you can't, you know, I hear about something with, with big eyes in the middle of the night. I got to go see what it is. Um, so plan, plan of, I was going to say plan of attack, probably not the best phrasing. Um, if we see it, everyone stand perfectly still and just stare it in the huge eyes. That seemed to work last time. <laughs> don't think, don't play, just stare. It may not to be able to identify us as a threat if we're still. Maybe, or maybe I just have really nice eyes to look at. Maybe that's it. Maybe just got it's real true. Good eyes. Yeah, so many, well, so many, many eyes there. <laughs> Corton looks wistfully <laughs> in Vindris' <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, Vin- Vindras is completely convinced that just stand still and stare will be enough to get through this situation. Well, I don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, y- YOLO, you only live once. All right, so this is Corton, uh, Lola, and Vindras, the adults having a strategy meeting. Sabrina, I th- guess you're falling f- You've fallen back talking with Zer, who likes you more than the rest of the party. And also, you seem extremely uh, perturbed by what you've learned about your mother. Uh, Do you want to talk to him about that? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I want to talk to him about it. What does he have to say? Uh, He's just walking, like, quietly, because you look upset, and he's, like, waiting. And if you don't say anything, eventually he'll just say, So, do you still want the necklace? I'll take it. No, I need it. It's the only thing I'm going to be able to use to find my mother. And she's out there. I don't care what the bat says. I'm also a, a bat for the record. Well, what's her name? I didn't. I, I wasn't there early enough to learn it. Diana. Oh, well, Diana's wrong. And she's stupid. That's treason. So let's keep that under wraps. <laughs> he, he just like w- push, puts a wing over your mouth and looks around to see if anybody's listening. The father is a nice but he wouldn't do that why would he kill my mom or get rid of her that doesn't make sense so uh, zur wasn't sure about everything before but you've just said it very explicitly so yeah, he's well, just she's like, not very smart yeah he says you're the you're the god king's daughter no i'm the white wolf you sound very kidnappable and ransomable i'm just gonna put that out there i mean you could try it i saved your life before by not attacking you no, I'm already on a mission. I can't betray you now. Diana has spoken. I'm just saying, in the future, you might want to keep that under wraps. It makes you extremely ransomable. Whatever. We're, why The demon's not going to care about that, so it doesn't matter. Well, if your friends aren't nice enough to tell you, someone has to. It's all stupid anyway. <sighs> I mean... Why would it even say Resort Spa if that's not what it is? <laughs> <laughs> Map shouldn't lie to you. This map doesn't even have a compass. It's just a drawing. Uh, I don't want to lie to you, kid. Your mom might be dead. Maybe. No, she's, she's... not. Uh, there's no way to know. Why would you get all your expectations up? They're just going to get shattered. But if you don't have any, you might be pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. That's how I live my life. Well, it's not how I live mine. I'm going to find my mom, and then I won't have to go back to the castle. (laughs) 
What if you find a different mom? There's apparently a lot of them out there. They all have necklaces. Do you have to have the one specific one? It has to be my mom. She's out there. Why? They all look the same. How dare you? (laughs) I was told my mother was very beautiful. More beautiful than anybody. Does she have wings? I don't remember. I don't think so. (laughs) How do you tell each other apart without wings? I've always wondered this. Is that the only feature that has discernible differences to you? Are wings? No, it just makes all... It's just... It's like... Vindross is like six feet tall. Is that not an easy... And has four arms. Is that not an easy enough way to tell us apart? Vindross waves in the background. (laughs) Just hi. I'm trying not to look at her. She looks very delicious. Don't eat Vindross. (laughs) Do I have to say that? (laughs) Is that a... Is that up for maybe negotiation? (laughs) I want to slap his hand. No! (laughs) This conversation is amazing. (laughs) What about just a little taste? You're weird. Stop it. I want to kick him in the shin. I want to just... I mean, and you know, I'll level with you. A little taste is probably going to be just fine. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. We don't need any more of this conversation. <laughs> um why don't why doesn't everyone roll uh well it depends how you want to approach this. Tell me how you want to approach this and we'll roll for it. I would suggest going sneakily because we have a, a sneaky guide leading our way. We should have him do it, and I well, I mean that just kind of seems like logically we'd get advantage. <laughs> I mean, I have good stealth already. Okay, so everybody roll stealth, and whoever gets the lowest can re-roll. I botched! Well, I shouldn't have said that. It'd be much funnier if you died. (laughs) Well, I botched as well, so one of us is going to have to take the botch. I already went. I rolled a seven. Uh, Fifteen. Not only does the party fail, but two of them botched. Even with the re-roll I just granted you, still a failure. This is very bad for you. Vindros is okay. It's very good. It just means we get to find our friend even quicker. <laughs> okay. I feel like we can do it. So the party is, is sneaking through the glass forest, and Zur at some point like begins to crouch down and say, Okay, so the demon is up ahead. Where? Let's split up. You'll have to talk and- louder. I can't hear you. <laughs> yes. Where is it? Where is it? The trees it? are doing that crunching sound again. Everyone starts yelling, and immediately two giant eyes open up, and the entire forest is flooded with light. Um, everyone dexterity saving throw. Ah, uh, botch. Uh, 13, I don't know why it pressed twice. 21. Vindros and Sabrina fail. Everyone else succeeds, so... 17 damage to the failures, 8 to the people who succeed, as there is an enormous crack of thunder rolls through the forest and a just wall of energy f- shoots towards the party it's almost like it's like that magna or it's like that memorex commercial i have no idea what you're talking about what are you talking about is there was it's the you know the guy he's sitting in the uh the chair and it turns on the, the stereo and the sound blows his head back you know is it real or is it memorex I do know the commercial. I just didn't remember the brand. So I, I, I need to be on Front Street with this. Uh, I'm down. So I'm unconscious. That shit knocked me against a tree and I'm knocked out. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of things are happening here. There's a huge explosive sound, like a crack of thunder and a wall of force moves through the forest. Like, like Conrad said, it's like that old commercial with the giant speakers where you're all blasted backwards. The entire row of trees is just obliterated, reduced to just tiny, tiny shards, completely shredded. Um, everyone's knocked back. Some of you are hurt very badly. Sabrina is thrown in through a tree, actually, because it's glass. She hits it so hard it explodes and she loses consciousness and goes tumbling off into a pile of glass shards. She is absolutely fucking wrecked. Um, the whole party is knocked down, though, and this 
this blast, whatever it was, is enough that if it's just like so one minute you're in a forest in the early morning and the next like you put your head in an oven that was fully on. Like the entire vibe of this place changes. You hear all the, the animals go running, birds take to the sky. You hear like people screaming like, run, run, it's away, go, go, go. Like something very bad has begun because of this botch. And um, yeah, Sabrina's the only one who's unconscious, but everyone else is cut up and bleeding. What do you do? Uh, I I think I think before that, v- Vindras's first instinct is to make sure that Sabrina is healed up, in in the possibly naive hope that look, we're not attacking you, we're healing our friend, we're not we're not being violent, we're being we're being gentle. Um. Okay, so it's Vindras. You want to sp- spend those spell slots to heal Sabrina? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast a cure wounds on Sabrina. Oh, hot dog! Honestly, this could be a fun time to do a fun kobold thing. Is uh, in order to get everybody else out faster, but, uh, gro- <laughs> grovel, cower, and beg <laughs> is a thing I can do. Explain that to the audience. Um, yeah, I'm about to. As an action, I can cower pathetically to distract nearby foes until the end of my next turn. Allies gain advantage on enemies within ten feet that can see me. I mean, we're not fighting this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, at least I can help a little bit. Okay, so Lola, so I, I need you to all to role play this. Uh, uh, Vindros, role play like helping Sabrina. And I want to like hear hear your interaction, and then Lola beg pathetically for your life. She, she, uh, so Sabrina is just going to like be rubbing her head. She's gonna be like, "Was it Amy? Did Amy do it? She always hates me." No, it's 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 okay. It's okay. You you didn't do anything anything wrong. You're all you're all good. I didn't mean to break it. It's 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 okay. It's okay. You you didn't you didn't break anything. It's it's all good. Good. I'm really tired and my head hurts a lot. Vindras is going to attempt to scoop up Sabrina as as best she can. I'm feeling kind of tired. Yeah. No. You need to. You need to. You need to stay awake. Just. Just. You know. You. you you're doing really well. You've just gotta. You just gotta stay up. Cause. Cause. Ah, oh, it's it, it's gonna be a great day, but you you don't want to miss it by sleeping. I'll stay up after this quick nap. No, 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 no. Uh, if required, Vindras is just gonna start poking Sabrina in the eyes, <laughs> make it really oh difficult. <laughs> <laughs> just like gently, just like, just like, hey, 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 that's uh, that's that's quite tough to sleep through, huh? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna Lola's gonna walk a little bit closer, oh, like stepping away from the group. Uh, she's gonna have her hands in her pockets. She's looking down, and, like kicking the dirt a little bit. Like she knew she did something bad. And we're like, oh shucks, there, your esteemed demoness, demoness. I don't know. I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, I came in here and I, and I wrecked your slumber. And you know, I just, I just wanted to see you because you seem real cool and powerful, and I really admire that because I'm just a lowly little kobold. And no, you know, nothing to my name. I got no skills. It's really hard, but, uh, you know, I'm begging you, please, let my friends and I leave your presence and you can go back to your slumber and know that we just, we think you're really cool. It was really cool that one chance I got to to, to lock eyes with you. So these two eyes are just uh, still glowing in the sky behind the, the 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 tree line. You can see them illuminating like half the forest now. The thing doesn't seem to be moving though. It doesn't even seem to be turning its head. It's just two giant glowing what essentially are balls of fire in the distance. Um, but the thing does not move or respond to your groveling. I looked up again so I wouldn't forget. That sounds confident. <laughs> Primeval awareness is something that I get at the third level um, for being the unearthed arcana ranger that I am. And uh, so what it says is because I'm like my mastery of ranger lore, I just connect with beasts and whatnot. Um, so it says I have an innate ability to communicate with beasts. Um, basically, uh, it says I can learn its emotional state. Is it affected by magic? Its short-term needs. Um, can I do that on the demon? So do you want to do that? I would like to do that. 
okay, so you use your ranger senses to get a read on whatever this thing is. Uh, so one thing it says is you learn its emotional state, whether it is affected by magic of any sort and its short-term needs. Its emotional state is none. Whether it's affected by magic of any sort, no. Its short-term needs, nothing. Oh, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to relay that to the party. Uh, it has no emotions. <laughs> Basically, the way I'll give you this in the flavor is like, oh, this is not an, this is, thing is not even yeah. alive. There's nothing to appeal to there. It's, Sabrina yeah. is going to shout out to it. Do you know where my mother is? Oh, no. <laughs> She's not dead. <laughs> the eyes don't react. But Lola, describe how you do this. Like, what does your attuning your senses look like for the audience? <laughs> okay this is really dumb but i immediately thought of fucking uh the tv show psych yeah and every time sean pretends to have a sick and he touches his, his head and pretends to have a vision um so i'm just gonna do that because i think that's fun okay so you put your hand to your head and you try to sense like its heartbeat to get a sense of how like agitated it is or like hear it's breathing to get a sense of its health and it just is it hungry it, it just doesn't have any of that Corton's going to try to approach closer then and see if we can observe it. As his as is his want, Corton big dicks it and just starts strolling towards the eyes in front of everybody. I think even Zer like is like cowering in the back now as you just stride confidently forward into the trees. Uh Corton and you see as you get closer these giant orange eyes uh which are now as you get close enough to see set inside a white metal face because this giant thing sitting in the forest is a giant humanoid made of what the bats call white glass but which you recognize as painted metal uh and it is a giant robot uh shaped like a person uh and it has been broken off at the waist and it's just a torso arms and a head sitting in a ruined uh clearing in this forest oh we need to find this thing some legs so it can join the party (laughs) Is it Primus? It is a mech. Uh, none of you in character know what that means, but it is a oh. giant ro- robot that people used to drive around in. Uh, mil- it's a military vehicle from before the end of the world. Man, that's not even a demon at all. So, Corton, you, you approach it first. Do you want to roll uh, to know in character some stuff? Everything I just said is out of character. But this is It's yeah, a giant um... white mech. You want to uh, insight or history? History, yeah. History? Yeah, I thought you might say that. <laughs> oh, botch. That's a botch. Uh, <laughs> Corton, I think you think that this is... What is the funniest thing you could think this is? You think it's a giant fertility idol. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. You're like, okay, so then this immediately gets folded into your cult lore. You Actually, yes, in your mind, everything clicks into place. And you're like, yes, this is going to be part of my like legend, part of my Bible. People will one day speak of right. when Corton found the idol. Yeah, yeah, yes. Th- this is a Bible story in the making. And with that botch, I'm going to say, Conrad, I need you to step up to the plate and make this as uncomfortable for everybody as possible. <laughs> oh, no. Hang on. <laughs> oh no behold here before us it's it's wondrous look at how there's nothing below the waist <laughs> oh no I shouldn't have said that <laughs> for we are what is below the waist Oh, preach, Corton. Zer puts his wings around Sabrina's ears. <laughs> she can't hear this. <laughs> and it flows from here. Here we will return to build our temple. Uh, Vindras at this point is, 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 has made her way over to just hype up Corton as much as possible. Lola's gonna cover Stuart's ears. <laughs> So is Sabrina still being carried by Vendross? Uh, I, I, let's say you've been you've been put down and left with uh, with Zer for a minute just to to have your ears blocked and not be involved in the fertility 
moment. <laughs> the fertility moment. Please don't say fertility the moment. Fertility moment is the <laughs> best thing I've That's heard That's the name of the episode. What the fuck are you talking fuck about? Me. <laughs> I thought it was going to be very cool for the people in a post-apocalypse to find a mech, and we made it horny immediately. Hey, hey. <laughs> You made it horny, yeah, Austin. Yeah, in fairness, you, you're you responsible for making it horny. You did, yeah, you said. So, uh, Sabrina is going to push past uh, everyone then. She's gonna, when she passes by Vindraw, she's gonna say, uh, excuse me, Sven, and then she's going straight to the robot now that she sees it's not attacking. Yeah, do you want to roll uh, something on the on the robot to actually do meaningful research instead of just taking Corton's word? She wants to roll on Arcana. Yeah, finally, Chris wants this roll so bad. I got a 14. All right, that's pretty good. You see uh, the robot has been severed at the waist, presumably uh, this giant. To you, it's like a giant or a demon uh, that just happens to be made out of metal. You know what metal is, unlike a lot of people in this setting. And you think it maybe this was, you know, a giant golem or some kind of, uh, like, war thing. Uh, you can tell that it has a weapon in one of its hands, which to you is like some kind of fancy crossbow. But we all know it's a beam rifle, which it fired into the forest. And it seems to have some kind of, what to you, is a magical, like, security security feature like the spell uh, alarm but which we know is like a uh, automated defense mode where when it senses things that could be dangerous it is able to defend itself in response to people in the trees being heavily armed it fired a shot and then when lola communicated her peaceful intentions in a pathetic manner it turned off its defense systems autom- in an automated yeah. uh response so you know it's not re- per- it's not Right now, currently dangerous, although it can become dangerous again if it feels threatened and it has a weapon. That's what you get for 14. Can I get inside of it? <laughs> uh, oh, interesting. Uh, so I guess uh, strength to try to wrench the cockpit open? It's metal. Uh, I guess I'm going to politely knock first. <laughs> but I am going to be like saying, hello, uh, and then I'll, I'll try to open it. Yeah, sure. Uh, I got a two. Does that open it? No, this is like you, this is like you, Chris Larios, trying to open a, a the door of a tank that is locked. I've it's done just... that several times, though. So <laughs> by the transitive property, I can then open this door. Awesome. Two was a pretty low DC, Austin, but I I appreciate it. You make no progress whatsoever. Everyone else sees uh, Sabrina approach the mech and begin pulling on the door in its stomach, but it, she's making no progress I, whatsoever. I want to try to. Mm hmm. I also rolled a two. Four. <laughs> <laughs> this is the funniest fucking- Brother Corton lifts his head and rises, <laughs> walks over, attempts to open the uh, cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, four, six. <laughs> and it also does not move. For a beautiful moment, I thought you were going to get it on the first try, and this would be like, ah, yes, right? I wonder. No, yeah, that would have been amazing. <laughs> That was really what I was hoping for, too. Uh, None of you were able to wrench open the door of the mech, and as far as we know at this point, no one will ever be able to. In fact, you all suck so bad at this, it somehow is more closed now. Considering we couldn't open the door, I think our chances of lifting and just, like, moving this thing, not great. (laughs) Well, now, you might think that. But I, I have been um, seeing some really informative things about how you can topple down, like, structures, mm-hmm. you know, with a couple of groups of people uh, and, like, a <laughs> chain, you know, and so, like, you wrap the chain around the structure, uh, you know, like a statue is a good example. Oh, like, it's, yes, it's, yes. it's like a statue, right? And so you, you wrap the chain a couple times around, like, two-thirds and then you have that chain going down and you then connect that chain to ropes, right? And you work, and working in two teams, pulling at the same time in a rhythmic fashion. You have to rock it back and forth to get it off its moorings. It's a very slow process, but you can eventually get these things to just fall over. Just saying. I have, okay, I'm a kobold and I have a thing maybe uh, called trap cunning, uh, which is if I'm, Arming or disabling a trap with thieves tools, I can have double f- proficiency. So maybe I can try to disarm the weird futuristic crossbow. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, the security system of a mech is a kind of trap. I'll give you that. As far as, like, definitions go, that's not unreasonable. Uh, so sleight of hand uh, to get your thieves' tools into its uh, whatever exposed wires you can and pull things out until it turns off. I got a seven. These dice have been really out there today. They've been all over the shop. Yes, Lola just pulls a bunch of handfuls of wires out and doesn't seem to have any effect. As far as you know, these are all like just hydraulic fluids and, you know, air conditioning. You've destroyed the air conditioning. Good job. So while Lola is trying to dismantle things, I want to try to steal a rock from her pouch. Don't make me leave all that rock talk in. No, you got to leave it in. Uh, Well, I have a reason to because I need a projectile. And I want to cast the spell Catapult, and I want to fire this rock up at the the gun. All right, read the audience, Catapult. So, Catapult, I get to choose an object that weighs between, like, one to five pounds that isn't being worn or carried, and it flies in a straight line up to 90 feet in a direction I choose, uh, and it stops if it it hits a, a solid surface. And then if it were to strike a creature or something like that, they'd have to make a dodge basically to avoid it. But it, it allows you to basically fire something at a, a super fast speed. Interesting. Um, so this is a, a spell attack? No, they would actually have to make a saving throw against it. Um, I guess it's I'm going to do... Dexterity. Yeah, I'm going to do negative five because it has literally as little dexteri- dexterity as a thing can have. Also, I feel like Lola totally caught you. I was like, you don't gotta steal little lady, you can just ask. Uh, six. That's gonna fail. Aha! Bang! Yeah, so, uh, Sabrina, describe this. You're basically doing a David and Goliath. It's a classic, uh, rock situation. Big man rock murder. Um, you can just headshot this thing and blast it. Like, it doesn't need to be blown clear out of the, out of the forest. It just needs to be knocked over. So, uh, also, I want you to emphasize, really, Sabrina's very good at magic. I feel like everyone keeps glossing over, like, you winning every fight with your exploding dagger or sleep magic, and now you're gonna headshot a mech. We're very aware of it. This child is terrifying. Yeah. We just don't want to acknowledge that this child is more proficient than all of us. We, yeah, we, we would also not, to, not like to inflate the ego of the already clearly... Yeah, that was... Yeah. <laughs> She's got enough. We don't get, want to get on the wrong side of you. We don't want to make you feel like you're better than you already are. We just gotta not acknowledge the amazing child. You ever see the Twilight Zone movie? Yes. <laughs> I know where that's going. Right. So there you go. Yeah, it's it's going to end in the death of someone and John Landis being a terrible shit human being. Now it's real again. Also, all of you just learned from uh, Diana the White Bat that the God King is basically doing a eugenics program to make as many children as possible to make one of them a god. Oh, so cool. that's a thing. Yeah, we did learn that. Uh, so just to clarify, Austin, the weapon's in its head or it's like a separate attachment, basically? It's holding a beam rifle in one of its hands. Okay, so yeah, so Sabrina is going to sneak over, and as I said, while Lola's finicking with the wire, she's going to take a rock out of the pouch, and specifically moves very quickly away from Lola. It seems like she doesn't like to be near her right now. And then she's going to kind of wind her arm back in a very amateurish, like, baseball pitch, but her body, like, is bent at the back to like 90 degrees and then she's just going to launch the rock with her catapult and she's going to fire the rock to hit the crossbow arm and basically knock it so it's straight pointing straight up in the air i'm trying to picture a rock moving an entire mech hand up like that all right then she hits it in such a vital point that it it knocks it loose and it aims straight down it's dead yeah, I think that makes sense. Like, it hits, like, a bolt or something. It just comes loose, and the, just the weight of the arm collapses it downwards. So the rifle's pointing at the ground, so if it goes off again, it'll blow himself up? Yeah. Do you want to do that? Do you then want to antagonize the mech and to trick it into blowing itself up? No, I mean, that wasn't my intention. I just wanted to disable it, because that was what we needed to do. Sabrina's thought is, like, oh, we have to deal with this thing so that people can come here to get to the bat people so that we can get that deal. Yeah, I just think this is a literal Chekhov's gun <laughs> now that we have this beam rifle. Hey, I mean, we could always come back to the forest later. There's plenty of time. Well, I mean, at some point, 
basically at some point somebody's going to be passing this way with a bunch of equipment and there's just going to be a comical explosion in the background <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh, no. um that's okay so that's interesting so the party has defeated the white glass demon but really what happened is sabrina threw a rock at it so that's a good i mean she got it back honestly it beat her ass yeah gave her a concussion that's true yeah, it just fired its its laser rifle into the forest, d- fucking destroyed everything for like 200 yards, and just a shockwave knocked you through a tree. But you showed it. Yeah, take that. Glass, stupid. <laughs> uh, Zur is very confused at what you did, and like kind of like sheepishly walks up to you and is like, aren't you afraid you're going to wake it up? No. Uh, what? It, it's not a thing. It, wait, uh, what do you mean? We had to get it. Why? I assure you, it is a thing. He reaches for and like picks a piece of glass out of your cheek. Well, we needed to stop it so we could get the the water to you, and it's we did it. Um, I noticed something earlier, Chris. I don't know if the audience or the players caught on to it, but um, Sabrina has been calling people the wrong names recently, and I want to yeah. I want to yeah, specifically canonize that a thing that happens in Dice Funk is if you're knocked unconscious, there is a consequence, and sometimes it's just like a disadvantage on athletics checks, or like you lose a spell slot. It depends on the mm. context of the injury. I want to make it official. The thing that has happened to Sabrina is she her brain's a little mixed up for the moment, and you're just role playing that yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, she had a concussion, and she has associated one of her siblings with one of the different party members. She has mistaken Vindros for seemingly, a, I would guess, a sister. Uh, so, Corton, uh, you're the everyone is ready to go. Are you done doing your creepy stuff? <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, he's good. He's good. Um, just sort of looks. He stops and looks looks up at the uh, idol again. And just does sort of a, you know, a sort of. One of those self-satisfied, just head-panning nods. <laughs> yeah, up, down, up, down, up, down, yep. Yep, that's gonna work. Vind- turns around. Vindros is trying to, as quickly as possible, sketch it. <laughs> yeah, okay, hold on, yeah, let's not gloss over this. This could be an important religious moment for you two dorks. What are you doing? <laughs> I, I think Vindros is gonna try and sketch this so that there is a, a record of the the event that occurred here. All right, so you don't have proficiency with art supplies, so just do a roll, t- just do a d20. That's a 12. Yeah, you do a slightly above average drawing of this uh, mech, which has been bisected. Uh, is Corton in the drawing? Oh yeah, of course Corton is in the drawing with all of all of his muscles like over overemphasized. <laughs> all right, so add, add that to your equipment. This may be an important religious text at some point. This is the tangible proof you have of this encounter. Okay. <laughs> I, I just I was very amused at the notion that your like the grand religious symbol essentially has like a ticking time bomb aimed at its own feet. <laughs> oh well, yeah, it, it'll be fine. I mean, if it, if and when it blows up, he'll just make another one. <laughs> you know, I thought I, f- I assumed you'd be like, oh no, I'm gonna make this part of the plan. I have a prophecy I need to tell you about. <laughs> oh no, it will be. Eventually, yeah, but this needs, this will be, it's not gonna, it will be a story, a legend of the destruction of this idol, but it it led us to the rebirthing. Well, it's in my equipment list now. (laughs) Uh, Sabrina is going to be looking over towards Corton, and she's gonna say, Marcel, we have to get going! Oh, forgive me, I'm just in such awe. You can do your weird church things later. She sure bonked her bean, huh? Corton uh, does a sweeping arm gesture and says, right, we go. All right, so uh, Zur leads the party out of the glass forest now that the the white glass demon is taken care of. There's no extremely important obstacles on your way you probably run into some patrols and you can scoot around them maybe some hostile wildlife but lola's a good ranger uh there's just uh some walking here does anybody want to say anything before you leave here did you see i pushed that thing down i threw that rock really well i i did see you throw that rock real good stupid god king 
He doesn't have that kind of power. No, does he not? He wouldn't have done it. But I did. Because I'm the White Wolf. You are the White Wolf. Yeah, I'm the White Wolf. Yeah, you are. And you know everyone's names. That's right, Sven. Hey, White Wolf, what's my name? Sabrina does not look like she wants to talk to you. What? What did I do? She seems almost afraid of you. Why? Uh, hey there, little lady. You look a little timid. What's going on? I'm fine. I didn't... I'm fine. Uh, see, that's how you know people aren't fine when they go, I'm fine. Uh, if I did something to make you mad, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you've never done anything to make me mad. I have to right. go over there now. Well, um, Vindros is going to try and stick with her and go, Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you know, you know how they are. Uh, concussions? Oh, she's talking to her. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking to her. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get a sense of who she thinks you are right now and, and what, what, what up. That'd be cool. I didn't do anything to make Amy mad, I promise. I know, I know. No one's, you didn't, look. I promise you, Amy's not mad with you. She is a lot. She hates me. She locked me in a cabinet for a day. I can promise you I did not know you were there. Where are we going? We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go to, go to town. Try and, uh... Right. I have to find mom. Yeah. Why are you going? Someone's got to make sure you're all right. No, I mean, like, what do you want there? Honestly, I just want to not be where the fights to the death are happening. Where I am beyond that, I could take it or leave it. That makes sense. Kingdom's stupid. I hate it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so I mean that was a really good um yeah. Vindros Sabrina uh Lola Corton. Yeah. Boner talk. Uh, I don't want to talk about boners. Corton, why are you always trying to talk about boners? <laughs> right? It's, it's I hear you say boners a lot. I don't, uh, what even is that? I'm I'm uh, boner. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm hearing things wrong. Somebody clip that. I want that as my text uh, ringtone. Whenever I get text, I just want to hear Connor go, Boner? <laughs> uh, how is carrying Mr. Green? How's that going for you? He's very soft. And I, I like him, if I'm perfectly honest. Although, uh, you know, it's generally speaking, I'm not... Not that into fur. Well, I do appreciate you helping me carry him. As you can see, I am quite small. Oh, yes, yes. No, I, if I'm totally frank, I, I prefer just about everyone I spend, you know, my most intimate time with to be fully shaved. What? Oh, yes. It's just, it's, it's cleaner. It's, it's easier, you know. Uh, the sweat gets so matted in thick hair, you see. And so for prolonged sessions of, you know, four and six hours, um, it becomes very damp and humid. This doesn't happen when everyone is fully sheared of all their hair. I'm gonna pretend I don't know what you're talking about. Do 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 do. Let's go, Stuart, over here. Can I roll hit dice for my soul? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, as you reach the edge of the forest, you realize you're about to go back onto the salt flats, and if you fall asleep on the salt flats, you do not wake up. So if you want to uh, camp and heal, now is the last time you're going to be able to do that. Yeah, we should yes. probably camp for the night before we leave the forest. Yeah. I think explicitly, once you get to the edge, he's like Zer literally says he's going to go fly out ahead and scout while you all set up camp. So... Everybody roll, and if you want to say anything before nap time, now is the chance. Uh, Sabrina's going to go up to Corton. And she's going to say, you said I couldn't go to sleep before. Can I go to sleep now, Marcel? I think you'll need to stay awake a little bit longer. But Vindros will stay with you, and maybe you could play a game. Okay. 
It's a funny way of saying Sven, though. Right, Sven, of course. Maybe you can Sven, you and Sven can play a game, and Corton shoots another look at Vindros and, like, raises an eyebrow. Yeah. Um... It better not be a weird game with all the things that you do. No, no, you you can you can pick the game. It's 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 all up to you. I wanna play a game where the white wolf wins. That's the name of the game. <laughs> okay, okay. Um well I I will be the game game master and I will play all the characters that aren't the white wolf and the white wolf can win. Awesome. Can I get advantage? Yes, you can have advantage as much as you this like. This is the best game ever. This is so much better than any other game where you wouldn't get advantage with everything. Hey, you can have double advantage if it means you stay up later. Oh, oh Lola's gonna try slowly coming up. Hey there, little Brina. How you still hate me? I don't know what I did, but hello. What did you call me? Brina. I'm the White Wolf. Ah. We're playing the White Wolf Wins. Ah, yeah. I just, you look like a Brina to me, so I call you that. Do you, do you want to join us playing the White Wolf Wins? Uh, yeah. I can be the wolf that doesn't win. What do you mean I look like a Brina? Uh, that's just, just, just what, you know, you look like you could be named Sabrina. Brina is a, is a little shortening little nickname. I like to do nicknames. You're always a liar, Amy. My name ain't Amy. My namey ain't Amy. Corton and Vindros, Lula keeps calling the White Wolf Sabrina, and you have no idea why. She's never said that. Well, I mean, I'm literally, at this point, Corton's just watching Lola reveal information about, he has, n- you know, that there's no reason for him to respond to it. Lola, you... Keep saying Sabrina. Where'd which, which, which you get that name from? Uh, you know, I'm a ranger. I'm just very insightful. Is that right? It is. It's, uh, it is right. You definitely don't know it from somewhere else. Well, not from somewhere else. Or someone else, even, really. So, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. It's just a weird ranger thing, you know. I know. I just, it's a, you gotta know what. It, see, like I saw a steward, right? And I looked into his eyes, and I was like, "Can you make an insight check?" Yeah. Yeah. She's full of shit. Can, can I deception against this? Yes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, I I got a seven, but Corton knows what's up. Oh, I got a seventeen. Oh, I rolled a nine. Uh, so, I mean, Corton, you know Lola's lying. Sabrina is going to move over to Corton, like almost kind of standing behind him. And she's just going to look over. And she's like, Amy's a liar. She always has been. Is that so, Amy? My name isn't Amy. What are you uh, lying about, Amy? It's personal. Mm. I mean, we've got someone here who doesn't really know who's who right now, and it really feels like this might help. Somebody pretty valuable, somebody, you know, a desperate ranger might be thinking it'd be a good opportunity to kidnap for a ransom. Yeah, yeah, that that's... Sure, yeah, that's all, that's... I am a criminal. <laughs> I think Zer that's Zer flaps down from the sky and says, "See, I told you, you're very kidnappable." Wait, hold on. Are you kidnapping her? Am I missing out on the kidnapping? Uh, no. I um, I I was totally that was the whole time. I was uh, a spy, not a spy, but I was like, maybe this is a valuable person. But I've uh, grown to uh, know and love y'all, so it's a. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just that. It's, it's, uh, I, yeah, nothing more. Nothing bigger. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know her name? It's not hard to know names. Sometimes you just know names. 
At this point, I think like Zer is like circling back around Lola, and like in the light of the campfire here, and the the distant cracking of the trees at the edge of the forest is creating a very spooky vibe as everyone suspiciously eyes Lola, and they're like beginning to form like a half circle around her. I want to make it very clear: Sabrina is ha- like basically right behind Corton, looking like peering around his leg. It's almost as though she's using him as a shield. Ah, uh, you know, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, Corton, you were letting that success ride. So you still know she's lying, even though she just admitted something pretty terrible, that she was lying the whole time. She's a spy and she was going to kidnap Sabrina. That's still a lie. It's a good story. Like, it's the sort of story I would write. I know because I wrote it. But just because you repeat it back to me doesn't necessarily make sense. It's really a lot better when I tell it. Why don't you tell me your story? And then I can tell you how to tell your story. Uh, nobody tells me how to tell my story. Amy lies. She uses it to get what she wants. She wants to be father's favorite and she doesn't care what she has to do. That's not... I'm not Amy. No, but Listen, you're a liar. I have a personal uh, thing. I am not a threat to y'all. I just don't think you need to know all my business. Sometimes you just figure out people's names by thinking about it, right? That's how. That's how you know things. You just think about it and then you know it. That's what they call bullshit. <laughs> Lola, dexterity saving throw. That's what they call psionics, technically, but... I botched. So many botches <laughs> tonight. Jesus. But I think that means I have to reveal my thing. This season, generally, a lot of botches. No, so you botch. What happens is, Zur has been circling around to your back this whole time. He looks at how scared Sabrina is in your presence, and having circled around behind you, he lunges forward and like snaps his jaws around your neck and wrestles you to the ground. I got her. I but I can't have her but I think that's how it should end. It looks like the journey to Harp City will continue with a prisoner. <laughs>